Moonwalk and Olivia Giacomato have their own unique styles but also carry their own sense of identity within the melodic techno or the dark progressive realm. Both styles take simple ideas and execute them in a way that is very high quality. So I'm going to cover that in this video. Their music is dark and powerful, eerie yet beautiful, slightly chaotic but definitely rhythmic and catchy. All the sound design in this video I will be doing inside of Vital which is a completely free synth so you can download that if you don't have it already. And all the processing is with stock effects or free plugins that you can download as well. I'm going to cover the sound design, reasons behind choosing certain sounds. So if you want to download this project, the presets, the samples, then you can click in the link in the description below, which grants you access to a bunch of project files similar to this one, different styles. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that stuff, and let's jump into the video. What you'll need to make this style of melodic techno is a strong kick and bass relationship with a driving or rolling bass line, an extra bass layer on top just to add more groove, some four to the floor drums with a strong emphasis on 16th hats and shakers. And I find that drums are sometimes a bit quieter than some other genres because it allows for the sound design and the really cool sounds to really shine through the mix. Strong stabs and leads to really give the character of the melodic techno style. A strong detuned lead gives the track a big identity. And finally, a haunting, beautiful vocal that just gives the track something really memorable and sets it apart from the rest. This style of music is usually 120 to 125 beats per minute. This track is 124 beats per minute. And the track is in the key of D sharp minor which is very common for this style of music. A sharp minor, A minor, D sharp minor, and D minor are also very common. A lot of the time you'll also see the melodic minor as well as the harmonic minor, which gives these tracks a bit more flexibility when using scales that you're not just focusing heavily on the natural minor. All three of those scales give a bit of an eerie or a bit more of a sad flavor when used correctly. First up, we have the kick drum, just simple layer with the kick is in E and I've pitched it down from E to D sharp. So it's the root note of the key. And then I have my overdrive adding a little bit of power to the kick. Just in the top end. Just wanted a little bit of crispiness in the top. The drum bus is limiting and pushing up the drive. Only at 30%. Just making it punch through that mix a bit harder. I have some EQ pushing up the top end because again, it wasn't really as high as I wanted it to be. So just pushing some of that crispiness through. And because of that, I was getting a bit of peaks. So I used a limiter to tame some of those. Going to the bass now, we have a couple different layers, bass, and then some other layers that are kind of bass, but they're more to do with like the leads and the rhythm of the track. So on the group itself, I have some EQ, some multiband dynamics, sidechain compression. The bass groove is vital. And inside of vital, I have a very simple patch. It's just a sawtooth wave with this ADSR, bringing the decay to about one second and the sustain is down. It's just a basic bass groove. I can turn the OTT and the EQs off and you can hear it's just a very simple patch. This is a very common bass line for this style. We look at the bass line, it is just jumping up and down. If we fold here, it's jumping up from higher octave to the lower octave and back down. So the kick plays in the first 16th note here and then it comes in to get that nice rolling feel. Very common in this style. And then I have the EQ cutting out to the lows, the OTT pushing that power up. Some EQ cutting more of the lows, especially after the compression. It's a good idea to add an EQ after compressors because when you compress or when you saturate, it can bring up some of the low end or it can bring up some frequencies that maybe you didn't notice were there before adding the compression. So it's good to add EQ after to clean up any artifacts that you get when you are compressing. 
And then of course some side chain compression, but this is coming from something else. It's not coming from the kick. The kick side chain compression is on the whole group itself. This is coming from a different channel, which I'll explain a little bit later. As for the base groove, we go back to the patch itself and very simple, just having this envelope two opening up on the filter cutoff. When the note plays, it opens up and drops back down very quickly. And I have the LFO one on the filter cutoff, which is just opening and closing it randomly a little bit. I have to change it to trigger from trigger to sync and change this to something like seconds. And now it's going to continuously play up and down the LFO so I can slow that down a little bit. So just by adding a little bit of that LFO onto the cutoff, it makes it so that the cutoff is always opening and closing just a little bit and giving a sense of humanization and making it seem less repetitive and less tedious. Just a bit of randomization on the bass itself. If you're not familiar with Vial, it is very similar to Serum. You have your wavetables here, the filters are down here, and then you have your envelopes and your LFOs here. So next up, I have my sub, which is just following the same path as the first base layer, that same pattern, and I am just using a simple patch with a triangle wave and then this rounded kind of squarey signy wave and it sounds like this. It has some extra harmonics coming in from this rounded kind of squarey type sine wave and then also from this triangle. The filter. cutting off all that high end that I don't need. And then some really strong side chain compression because it is hitting pretty heavily. And I wanna make sure that I'm making room for that uh, kick to come through in the mix. Both together. Sounding pretty full, pretty uh, powerful. Then I have this gritty top and this bass top. These are technically more lead sounds, but I'm going to show you now because they are uh, sort of like accents to the bass, especially in the beginning of the track. So if I start over in the beginning of the track, I'm actually using this pattern here. It's pretty random and it is rhythmic. And I find this in a lot of these melodic techno tracks, these kind of machine gun style uh, sounding bass rhythms. So you can obviously hear some uh, opening of the cutoff filter there. That's with some automation. So it's opening up at the very end with some automation on the actual cutoff filter. So the filter opens up a little bit more as it's playing along. But the patch itself is just two oscillators. I'll let you listen to each on their own. I call this chuggy saw because it's chugging along. So to make this patch, basically I have this oscillator one with this sync on. So if I turn off this sync, we have this saws for days. That's what it looks like. And this is what it sounds like. You put the sync on, it gives us more metallic-y kind of phasery sound. I can push that up and down. So you just kind of find that sweet spot of where you like for this style of sound. And then the envelope is just dropping down to this lower sustain. And I have to sustain up a little bit so that I can turn the release up. Otherwise it feels a bit choppy. I'll turn the reverb and the distortion off and I'll turn the EQ off as well. So you can hear it just totally dry. There's one more distortion in here. I'll turn that off. And the sync off. Simple soft clipping, reverb, EQ. But if we don't need that overlapping frequency, if we already have the low end from the other bass, some more EQ. And I'll turn the heat wave on, but I'll wait till after I explain more of the sound itself so that we can hear it without the heat wave, which again is a free plugin. I'll get into that. So then I have this going down by an octave. The sync is on, giving it that metallic-y feel. This one here is a brown noise oscillator. Both have a little bit of unison. So four voices and 3% and 7%. You can hear that this oscillator too just bulks it up a little bit. Gives it more of a sustained feel. So I'll push that to sustain back up. 
And that's just gonna hold it open a little bit more when I'm holding a note. So as long as I'm holding the note, it's gonna stay open. And when I let go, I get a bit of release. And that envelope two is doing the same thing. It's just punching down, creating that pluck. And then I have my drive pushing up a little bit to give it more power in the low end. And I have this key tracking on. So this means that the different notes of the sound are going to uh, change the filter cutoff a little bit. So if I go into the sound itself, you'll notice that there is a bit of difference in each of the notes. So the lower the pitch, the less the cutoff filter will be opened and we get a kind of quieter sound with a little bit less of an aggressive tone to it. And if it's a higher pitch, it'll sound a tiny bit louder and it'll have a bit more of an open cutoff. It's pretty subtle, but again, it just adds a little bit of humanization to the bass so that it feels a bit more interesting. So overall, not a complicated sound. It's just choosing the right wavetables and manipulating them so that they sound a little bit more resonant or a little bit more tonal to fit the style that you're after. Later on in the track, I actually use this bass sound as part of the kind of lead rhythmic drop uh, sound. I don't really know what to call these things. But this rhythmic bass top that plays in the main peak of the track. So I've changed the MIDI here, so it's playing more of a rhythmic thing. I found this in a lot of Moonwalks tracks. They did this, and it's really cool. So they use like this kind of sustained bass sound as part of like a, a rhythm, but it's also like a lead. So it has a melody to it. Jumping up quick notes in succession, jumping up higher and lower octaves back and forth usually creates this melodic techno kind of ethereal sound. Jumping up and down notes in quick succession usually gives that kind of eerie feeling of that melodic techno. This is a good tip that you want to kind of cascade across at least one or two different octaves to get that feeling, that really big excitement when writing leads and things like this. Lastly, there is some EQ that I want to touch on and heat wave. So the EQ is here because it is pulling out some frequencies that I noticed that a lot of Moonwalk tracks had was this kind of like shelf cut in the EQ. At least I think that's what they're doing, where it makes it feel like a little bit warmer and a little bit less gritty in the top end. So I'll show you before and after, but first I'm going to turn on the Heat Wave, which is a free distortion plugin, which I find kind of crisps up the sound and it's a really nice subtle distortion and it's totally free. So definitely recommend grabbing this one as well. And lastly, this bell cut in the EQ. So I just made this cut and swept back and forth until I found that sweet spot that made it sound more like the Moonwalk lead in some of their tracks. I did make this lead here called Rezo Top. I didn't like how it sounded in the final project, but I wanted to show you anyways, because it is a pretty cool sound. So I used this hollow distorted FM. Same idea, just made a pluck with a really quick decay to give that stabbing effect. And then I just used this sync again with this hollow distorted FM. So this will all be in the project file if you wanna download this. All these presets come with it. So if you just wanna use that, I threw it in there for you. I have this, what I call the lead wave. This is a pretty cool sound. Uh, it's using Vital again, with some EQ. OTT reverb and a wider uh, plugin, which again is totally free. I'll put links to all these in the description below and take a listen how cool this sounds. It's a pretty nasty sound. I'll show you how I made it. And this is influenced by all Olivier's music because he does a lot of really big, huge, wide saw type sounds. And they're really clean. They're simple ideas, but they're so professional and they sound so cool. So I have this acid rock featuring Manix wavetable. It's a weird name. Quad saw and then just another sawtooth here. So I'll turn them all off. And the, oh, and a white noise down here. So this is it by itself. <laughs> Down by one octave, I have this unison up pretty high. If I turn this down. It's a pretty big trancey type sound. Uh, the effects, I have some distortion, some flanger, and some phaser. Again with the voicing off. You start to hear the bass sound a little bit. Turn those effects back on. The phaser and the flanger gives that kind of uh, like echoey kind of uh, hollow sound and then the filter it just acts as a bit of a pluck so it's a bit uh punchy at first and then i have the oscillator two an octave two octaves down with a quad saw 
Again, with that phaser and the flange, you're really giving it that crispiness. And that really big moving sound. And the unison, of course. Let's check it out with the OTT and without the reverb. And without the distortion. So you can start to hear how it becomes uh, more and more of a basic sound, and then I can turn the detune back up. Really cool sounding, the distortion back on. Flanger. Phaser. Reverb. OTT. And then I have the third oscillator. By itself. Just nasty. Just a sawtooth with that low pitch is just creating that uh, with the, the phaser effects. And the OTT. Just sounds really, really crispy. And finally, some white noise to bulk it up as well. Really crazy sound, but the real trick to this was that I used this pitch changing on my keyboard here. So when I play the note, and I recorded that in the clip automation itself. So if I go into the envelopes here, you can see I recorded this pitch rising and then dropping. And that's what makes it sound even more alive and more interesting. Doing it for here as well, dropping down in pitch. Such a cool sound. On the bass group itself, I have some EQ, some multiband compression, just squishing down the frequencies a little bit to make them feel a bit more compressed together. Multiband dynamics compressing all of the bass. Then some sidechain compression and another limiter just to make sure that no peaks are getting through. I mentioned that the bass groove had this sidechain. So if we look, it is the bass top, which is that the main kind of rhythmic bass here. So when this bass is playing, it's actually going to squish down a little bit of the bass groove. And that's so that the instruments aren't overlapping too much. They're making room for each other. If you have something like Track Spacer, then this is a really great way of dealing with this because Track Spacer only focuses on the actual frequencies and not the whole sound. But if you don't have Track Spacer, then you can just use this. Pull down a couple dB, two to three or four dB, and it just creates a little bit of room for the overlapping frequencies and can make it sound like it gels a little bit better. Finally, I wanted to just show you this bass preset pack by Bound to Divide. It is a really great pack. I just wanted to cycle through some of the presets in case you do have Serum. It's just so many good bass sounds in here. A link to this pack will also be in the description below or I'll put it up in this card right here. Go through a few more of these. Lots of bass sounds that you can choose from. This is the pack right here. So if you want to download this, the link is in the description below. Moving on to the drums. The drums in this track are pretty simple. We just have a few layers here. With melodic techno, the drums typically aren't super complicated. Usually a strong 16th hat or shaker to drive the drums along and then your typical main hi-hats. And with this style, a lot of the time it's not really claps. It's more these bigger types of splashy high-end snares. So on the drums, we have the main hat, and here I have just two layers of hi-hat. We have this body, and that is by Basic Waves, and this sharp hat. So the Basic Waves hat is from a sample pack. A lot of people ask me which sample packs I use or which preset packs I use, so I definitely recommend is this hat shaker loop from the Basic Waves drum loop pack. So I'll add those to the links in the description below if you want to download the sample packs that I use. Actually, the second layer of my drums is this hat shaker loop from the Basic Waves drum loop pack. So combining that with the main hi-hat gives a little bit of swing and groove. A little bit of humanization with the groove pool on here so that the samples are hitting just a little bit off the grid and the velocity is a little bit different, giving a sense of humanization and so that it's less repetitive. Saturation to bulk up the sound a little bit. 
and some EQ cutting out the lows and the sharp highs. Next I have these 16th hats. So 16th hats are when the are the hat is playing just consistently on the 16th note like a shaker, but it's not necessarily a shaker. What's important about writing these is that a lot of the time they have a bit of side chain compression from the kick so that they groove with the kick. Without, it gets a bit stale and repetitive. And with, you feel that flow a little bit. A little bit of velocity on the hats as well and some groove pool to make it, again, just to feel a little bit more realistic and humanized and less tedious and repetitive. Then I have these noisy hats, which is a hi-hat that I've taken out the transient a little bit, faded out a little bit, and wrote this vocoder to kind of look like an Aphex Twin logo, which was unintentional, but looks pretty cool. And this adds a bit of white noise to the hat. I'll turn off the other effects. You can hear just as is. Doesn't sound good because I've actually dropped the pitch down by a full, uh, almost a full octave. Add the vocoder. Some EQ. This Wanderer is a delay, so it's adding in a bunch of different left and right filtered signal. It sounds really nice. Just gives that sense of atmosphere and airiness and makes it a bit more interesting. Some side chain compression from the kick and then some side chain compression from the other hat. So the main hat is actually going to squish down this shaker so that the main hat can punch through the mix. And some auto pan to go back and forth in my ears. Just subtle. These off shakers are just another kind of background white noise sound. So it's some vocoder cutting off the highs and the delay in the side chain at the end. Sounds like this. Adds a little bit of movement and makes it a little bit less stale. Lastly, I have my clap slash snare, and this is a really nice, bright sounding snare, really powerful. Two layers of really bright, Snares, basic wave snare, again, using the basic wave sample packs for a lot of my drums. The overdrive is adding some crispiness to the highs. Maybe a little bit too much. I'll dial that back down just a little bit. And then some EQ. I'm also using this for my snare roll. So I have some automation on the snare roll. So when the first snares come in, the EQ is actually being cut out from the bottom and the top. You can see the top starts in the bottom, goes up, and then the bottom starts higher and goes down. And this is so that when the first snares come in, they're not super bulky, right? You can hear it really obviously. But if it comes in like this, it kind of fades the snare in a little bit. That is it for the drums at the group processing. I have a glue compressor. Usually between two and five dB on your glue compressor is good. Grabbing the peaks and gluing everything together a little bit. On the individual channels, I do have return tracks focused on the drum reverb. So a pretty short decay time. I have my low cut off and cutting out some more of the lows here, a little bit of pre delay, and I'm sending each of the individual drums to the drum reverb on the return track, which usually helps keep it a little bit more clean of a project and sounds like it's a little bit more cohesive in the mix. And then I have this New York compression or parallel compression channel, and all my drums are also going there. I won't get into it too much. But basically New York compression or parallel compression is a way of really squishing the crap out of a sound and then dialing in a little bit just to taste and it really bulks up the drums without actually making them take up very much more headroom if really at all. So if I turn this off and on with the drums, you'll be able to hear a very subtle increase in the perceived loudness. To get New York compression, basically you throw a compressor on a return track, 100% dry wet, compress really heavily. So you're just basically compressing it so much that it sounds terrible and then dial in to taste. For example, on my hi-hat here, I have about negative 17. 
It's very subtle, but it does add a bit of power and a bit of weight to your drums in a way that doesn't take up much headroom. And it's great for increasing the quality of your professional sounding mix. Up next, we have the synths, which consists of the lead, pad, and a vocal. Which... So first, this is a very typical moonwalk type lead, very melodic techno vibe. And I'm using a vital again, and this preset is a sawtooth with another sawtooth and this kind of square with a tiny pulse in the middle and some unison on all three of these channels. Let's take a listen. What's important with this, again, is really focusing on the melody itself. The melody is very important to curate a more mysterious or an eerie type vibe with this music. So again, focusing on the minor scale, the melodic minor, and uh, focusing on jumping up a lot of notes. Usually jumping from like the first to the seventh or eighth semitone uh, creates a sense of eeriness and a bit of discord. So focus heavily on writing a good melody that works for this style, and it will really take the track a long way. Let's look at the vital again. We can look at the sound design. I am just using a pluck on envelope two, and envelope three is also adding a tiny bit more of a snappiness to the top end. So I turn the amount off. This is what it sounds like. And back on. Basically, it's just opening up the top end of the filter a little bit more very quickly. So only at 0.304 milliseconds where this one is, a, is holding on to the sustain. So it's kind of opening up and then just very quickly opening a little bit more then closing and then closing again. And it just makes it so it stabs a little bit harder. Oscillator one, sawtooth, detune is very important for the sound. Push that detune up. Instantly sounds like that melodic techno vibe. Oscillator two, lower octave, even more detune. Some slight detune on the actual sounds themselves, the actual oscillators. LFO is actually adjusting a little bit on this pitch as well, giving it even more of a bit of vibrato and detune. And oscillator three. With that detune, it just sounds like spacey and like kind of sci fi y. And that adds just a little bit of another layer to the sound to make it a bit more complex and a bit more unique. I have on the vital some key tracking. So this actually will change how open the cutoff is depending on which note is played. So the lower notes will actually be more closed than the higher notes. It's very subtle, but when the track is playing and it jumps up down octaves of notes or from lower notes to higher notes, it'll just play it a little bit different and make it sound a little bit more humanized. It also has velocity tracking. So the velocity is controlled by here. So the higher velocities will open up the cutoff a little bit more and the lower velocities will have the filter cut off down a little bit. And this makes it feel more realistic, more humanized, more interesting and adds so much modulation so that the track doesn't feel so repetitive. This lead layer is just a bit of a pluck to add some white noise and this pulse width and making it really punchy. The width. Turn up a little bit actually. adds another layer of complexity to this, making it feel more professional and a little bit stronger in the context of the mix. Some delay and some reverb inside with some sidechain compression on the lead group. Some gentle sidechain compression on the overall synths to add a little bit of groove to the synth group. I have a simple Andes Air Pad, just a basic pad preset that I chose and just playing the D sharp and then a fifth higher and then the other D sharp octave, just playing this chord. Cutting out a lot of the low end, throwing on a wider, which is again, free plugin, link in the description. It is a width plugin. It's really nice. Just pushes things wider. Some chorus. Just adding a little bit of movement. It's very subtle. And then some reverb.
That reverb really helps to soften the sound and make it feel much further in the back in the mix. So I actually have two vocals here. At first, I'm going to cover this like robotic sounding vocal. So this isn't the singing vocal. This is just like this kind of cool vocal effect that you can use with a vocoder. So it sounds like this. Alternate reality. It says alternate reality. And I'm just using this vocoder here. This is what it sounds like without. Alternate reality. Literally just me saying it. Alternate reality. And then I made it so that it was on the beat so that it kind of lines up with the timing of the track. Alternate reality. Which is important so that it feels like it's still in time. And I'm using a vocoder to make it sound like, you know, Daft Punk vibe. Alternate reality. Futuristic, kind of goes hand in hand with this style of music. So what I did is just put a vocoder on here and you change this from noise. Alternate reality which still sounds pretty cool, to external. And then the external, you choose a different sound. So I chose this wavetable. You can use any synth you want. Change this to a sawtooth wave. Literally just sounds like this. And you turn it off so you can't hear it. And then you route in the vocoder to that wavetable. And now when you play the vocal or any sound through that, it's going to sound like that. Alternate reality. Again, the white noise sounded pretty cool. Alternate. Reality. I might keep it like that. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> uh, you can change the release time. Alternate reality. And you can also change the dry wet so that it feels a little bit like the original vocal coming through. Alternate reality. Which also sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to do the vocal section of the track. And for this, I actually used a tool that converted a splice sample of an acapella into something that fit the track a little bit better. So the original sample, I wanted it to feel a bit more like haunting and a bit more airy. So I used actually a vocal AI conversion tool online called Automy. So Automy takes vocals and convert them into royalty-free versions of those vocals. What they're saying is you can take acapellas and studio vocals and samples from Splice, throw them into Automy and create your own versions that you can use in your own music. They have all these different vocal profiles, so you can choose the different types of singer that you want and then throw in the sample and it converts it into something that can sound a little bit better, a little bit different, or completely different. You can change the gender, the timbre, the pitch, remove the background noise and clean it up. It's really powerful and check this out. So here I'm going to type any song. I'm going to search John Summit where you are because I'm a huge fan of John Summit. I can grab this acapella off of YouTube. Here we have the John Summit studio acapella for where you are. Choose that. I'm going to choose Blake as my singer. It's a really gritty, raspy voice. And I put this up a few semitones just to show you how cool it sounds. Conversion strength, I'll put 100%. And I know that the, there is a little bit of reverb and echo and a little bit of noise in the studio acapella. So I'm going to put both of these on and then hit convert. I'll also do another one without the semitones pitched up just to show you what it sounds like in the same key. While that's converting, let's go over the website a little bit. You can convert vocals. You can train different voices using like recordings of other vocals, which is really cool. You can make like your own vocalist, essentially. You can isolate the vocals by removing the different instruments, as well as mixed voices, cover vocals that you can choose from. I'm not a copyright lawyer, know anything legal about the copyright laws, but on the website, it does say that with the rights that you have concerning the vocals generated are royalty free on a paid plan. So it says on a paid plan, you can use generated vocals for commercial purposes, including including releasing tracks on platforms like Spotify, you do not need to credit Automy or the royalty-free voice. It says that with Automy, musicians can convert vocals to any of our royalty-free voices and the generated vocals are copyright-free and can be integrated into your own music. So again, I'm not a lawyer. I, you can't take my advice, but the website here says that. So the conversions are finished. Let's take a listen to the higher pitch one first. Do you dream alone under the moon? Is it by day, by day when I'm with you? So it sounds really cool and really powerful. Let's listen to the regular key. It's amazing how much expression you get out of this vocal from this AI tool. I used a different singer for my vocal. I took a sample from Splice, I threw it in here, and then I used the Automy conversion kit to bring it up in pitch by a few semitones. The sample itself wasn't the best quality sample, but the better samples you put in here, the better quality you're gonna get out of them. So keep that in mind. Is this the way how you saw it? Is this the way how you planned it from the start? Is this the way how you lived it in your mind? The new version has like, a, it's just cleaner. It has more of a, an attenuation on the sound, which is really cool. So I can download this, throw this into Ableton and drag and drop in that new acapella. And that's going to replace all of the samples here. And I can turn down the gain back to what it should be here. 
Okay, so now I have this new vocal in here and it's being sent to a return track. This return track here has a delay, a reverb, and then a compressor. The compressor is actually squishing down the signal so that when the original vocal comes in, it's squishing down the reverb and delay, making room for that original vocal. And then when the vocal stop playing, then the delay and reverb come back up. Let's take a listen to how that sounds before and after the sidechain compression. Is this the way how you saw it? Is this the way how you planned it from the start? Is this the way how you lived it in your mind? Oh. So you'll notice that the vocal gets a little bit cleaner when the compression is on because it's ducking down the reverb and delay, making room for that original dry, strong vocal to come through. Is this the way how you saw it? Is this the way how you planned it from the start? Is this the way how you lived it in your mind? Oh, is this the way how you end it? End it, 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 If you want to check out more content like this, click this video right here. And if you want to check out what YouTube thinks you'll like, then click this video right here.